Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, before we do the news, we'll do that later in the day, but there was a uh, question that just came uh, through the email and I took a look at it and I thought it was uh, pretty interesting. And let me just blow this up real quick. And it was from Insomniac and he says, uh, car broke down last year. I had to sell $1,500 worth of Bitcoin that would have been worth 5,000 today. Now I gotta start paying student loans at the beginning of the month, uh, wishing you an all much better 2021. I'm holding what I have left and I'm buying $10 whenever I actually can. So when I looked at this, I was thinking to myself, you know, as people get into this cryptocurrency digital asset space, everybody's different. Everybody's different to what they uh, can invest in, want to invest in, their risk tolerance and everything else. So. I thought it was a, a good idea uh, to put together some like a little down and dirty uh, type of uh, investment plan of what I would do if I had to start uh, right now. And actually, I got this idea from my friend George. We were talking uh, yesterday and he said, you know, he goes, again, not everybody's like us. They can't just put a ton of money in and just, just let it go. Some people, you know, really are strapped and 10 bucks a week is a lot. And then there's other people who like a thousand bucks a week is nothing. So it's just one of those deals. So I thought, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. What would I do if I had to invest right now and I had limited funds? So uh, let's just backtrack, first of all. Now, let me come in here. And what I want to show you is, first of all, let's take a look at the prices there. They're crazy. Uh, Bitcoin is almost at 40,000. ETH is almost 12, well, is 1270, almost going to 1300. Uh, USDT, XRP, I mean, XRP is up way, way massively. And I mean, everything's just up. So the question then becomes, okay, what do I invest in? Well, first, let's take a look at this. I want to show you the thing that I'm always talking about, which is having all-time high dip and reset because everything is in a four-year cycle, right? So when we have, let me back up here. When we have this halving, and it happens, you know, every four years. Those are the, those are the four-year cycles. So if we take a look at this. The halving in 2012, the price was between five and 14 bucks. Can you imagine getting a Bitcoin at like $10? That'd be insane, right? Well, back then, no one really thought too much of it because it was just like, this isn't, I mean, they thought it might go somewhere, but nobody knew for certain. Uh, there's a lot of people that threw, threw away their hard drives. That's why we're missing two to three million of uh, Bitcoin that just got thrown away. And then, in just a very short amount of time, we went to an all-time high, which was in 2013, $1,100. So $10 to 1,000 bucks, essentially. Then we had a dip, and uh, this is what always happens after an all-time high. Then there was, a, there was a reset period. So that was the first cycle. Then we had this little beauty, which is what uh, I went through and most of us went through. And what it is, is we've got a halving, which that price in 2016, was around 375 to almost a thousand, right? So pretty good times to probably invest into it. Then you had your all-time high, which is when pretty much when I got in, you know, around 8,000, 10,000, 12,000, and the, it hit 19.5. That was in 2017. Then you had a massive dip, and then you had a big reset, uh, which was in 2019. Now we fast forward to roughly today, and our having this is what we see. We see this having, and we when uh, in, in 2020, and we go, wow, it's 29,000. Today it's almost 40,000. That's amazing. So we take a look at this graph, and we're like, well, this is what it looks like. This is what we have, and we're thinking about the next year as an all-time high, which is 2021, and we think to ourselves, okay, this is when it's going to really pop off. And we just take a look at this, and we're thinking that 40,000 is like the end-all, be-all. But that's not how we should look at it, really. How we should be looking at it is just how we saw it in the other two cycles, which looks like this. The flat piece right here on our left-hand side. Let me blow this up. This flat piece right here is really the beginning of this amazing all-time high bull run. Now, could it happen? Could it not happen? Nobody knows for certain. But if we take a look at the last two cycles, it's a pretty good indicator. Now, the past does not uh, predicate what's going to happen in the present and the future, but it's a pretty good guess of what could actually happen. So um, what are we looking at here? Well, in 2021, it's going to be uh, pretty massive. Then if history repeats itself, we're going to see a dip and then we're going to see a reset. So we have all this in mind, right? So what would I do if I had to start right now? Well, I will just say this. All the money is made 
All the money is made when it's boring as hell. That's really what it comes down to. This is um, the best times to really invest is when nobody else is investing. And that's, that takes a lot of uh, perseverance and it takes a lot of guts. And those types of people in 2016, when we had that halving and it was like, you know, I mean, we went up all the way to a thousand, then we dropped to three hundred dollars. No one wanted to invest in that time, but it was the ones that you know that, that were smart and said, you know what, on a dollar cost average in, or they dumped all their money into it. I mean, you know, if, if they did that route, that's a good time. Uh, the second, not the second, another great time would be around right here in around 2019 when everything just took a big dump, and uh, there was there wasn't so much volatility we saw in 2018, but it was very flat just a little bit, you know, ticks in there. But again, very boring. That is when all the money is made, when it is boring and nobody wants to do squat. Now here's the thing, you, my friend, you are right here, essentially, if you kind of take a look at, at what, what happened before. During that halving, in between the halving and the all-time high in 2016 and 2017, it was pretty flat. That's what we're talking about right here. That is where you are at right now in 2021. We just got done with the halving and we are going into this all-time high. So the second best time is right now. And I've had people from yesterday's show, they said, you know, hey, I'm just getting in and I'm kind of excited. And I'm like, oh, you son of a I wish I was you. I envy you. I envy everybody who's in this space right now because it's a, it's a great time. Okay. So this is what I have right now. So I have to take a look at my portfolio and just kind of, you know, give you what I would do. So this is my portfolio that I have. And what I did was I did that little action right here in 2019 when I was actually 2018, 2019, is I lost massive in 2017. Or I, I gained a lot, but in 2018 when I took that, that big dump, that dip, I lost a lot. But I'd only lose if I sold. But I am too damn stubborn to sell. And I am not in the business of losing money. And uh, I just held on to it. And I actually, as I was losing, I was telling my wife, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep dollar cost averaging because I have a, a good hunch. And she's like, well, I can't stop you because I know how you are. And uh, here we are today. So I just dollar cost average in for three years. And this is where I'm at. So this is my portfolio that I have right now. It's, and it wasn't as large as, as, as it was right now. The idea back then was to kind of, you know, consolidate. <clears throat> I sold off some stuff, some stuff and, and got into uh, certain projects. Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Cardano were uh, one of the big ones, XRP, and uh, some other ones. But now this is what I have inflated to because I kind of like to hedge my bet and diversify. So uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, Cardano, and I'll get into why I invest in those in a bit. But I want you to remember one thing. If you're getting started right now, if I was going to do it, I have to remember that a percentage is a percentage. It doesn't really matter if if Bitcoin goes up 100x, uh, it's not going to go up 100x. But if it does, and you put in 100, uh, it doesn't. It's still a percentage is a percentage. So 100x is 100x. It doesn't matter if you put in 100 bucks or 100 thousand dollars. It's still 100x. You know. Uh, same thing with every type of uh, crypto and digital asset we're going to talk about in a little bit. So. The question then becomes, what do I want to invest into if I have limited funds? Well, everybody's different. It's, it's all different for your risk tolerance and where you are at in your life. Now, if you go back and, and look at other things, people will say, well, if you're young, you know, you want to you wanna take more risks. But if you're, if you're older, you want to take less risks. That doesn't apply here. I mean, it, it can if you want to do it like that. But in my personal opinion, I think it really comes down to percentages and uh, and what you're comfortable with as far as riskiness. Because some people, uh, I have some people on the channel who were like 70 years old, and they're like, "Hey, Rob, I you know I had a rough rough life, and uh, you know I lost some things, and now I'm kind of looking for that for that payday." And uh, there, first of all, there's no get rich schemes, but um, there is an opportunity if you have more of a risk of risk tolerance. But again, I cannot tell you what to do because I am not a financial planner, not a financial advisor. So this is just what I would do if I was starting today and had limited funds and went from there. So oh, and the next thing I want to talk about is, is uh, which bull run. I forgot to talk about that. So it is different. If you want to really clamp down and say, I need to make it here. I need to make this bull run 
2021 and then 2022, uh, you know, the when that dip comes and I'll figure that out later. But if you want to, or if I, if I was going to really uh, go headstrong in this bull run, this is what I would do. Uh, to make it really easy, if you wanted to stretch yourself out to 2025, 6, 7, 8, it's super simple. Just keep dollar cost averaging and there's nothing else you need to do. <laughs> that's, that's the simplest thing. But let's just stick with the here and now. This is what we got. So I'm not going to talk about every project out there because I don't know every project. I have no idea what every project is. What I have is this. This is my portfolio, and I just kind of took a look at it and just said, where is everything going? Uh, what is the price today? What is the prediction it could be? And what is the probability it could get there? And the way I looked at it was if, if it had historical data, like Polkadot just came out, so I can't look three, four, five, six years back. Uh, Bitcoin I can, Ethereum I can, but on some of these I cannot. So I take a look at really the fundamentals, the things that I've been covering, the people that are in the team, which I'm not going to go over in detail about that, uh, and then also what is the market cap? Because if you have a trillion, <laughs> a trillion tokens uh, to really, really rise up in price, it's pretty tough because uh, you have so many tokens, right? That is one of the problems with XRP. It's like 100 billion or something like that. Um, but if you're a Bitcoin and you only have 21 million, well, it doesn't take that, that, that much uh, uh, effort to really get up there as long as people believe in the project, which a lot of people do. So let's start with this. With Bitcoin, just Bitcoin, I've always said this. I think Bitcoin is, is $150,000 uh, in this bull run. And we take a look at a lot of different factors over, over the course of this last year. And I have pretty much, I have no doubt it's going to get there. I mean, I might miss it by 20K or somewhere around there, but I think 150K is within reason, especially with all the institutions that are driving right now, especially with all the retail that is really getting involved. I mean, heck, I just saw a, an interview with an, an NFL, I forgot his name. He's an NFL quarterback. Uh, pretty good. And he's just talking about Bitcoin, how he got into it a couple of years ago, and he thinks it's going to be great. And I'm like, you know what? It's, it's just everywhere. It's going mainstream. And of course, again, all the institutions and everybody that's buying up. And not to mention the fact that, oh, that little company called PayPal is gobbling up everything along with uh, Grayscale and MicroStrategy and, and every other one that's out there. So uh, yes, I think it could definitely do it. So when I say probability here on the right side, let me blow this up. When I say probability on the right side, I'm talking about a zero to 10. So zero means I have no faith that it's going to hit that. And 10 means it's going to hit that. Let's move on to Ethereum. So Ethereum, uh, the all-time high was around 1,400. Right now, as of January 7, 2021, is at 1,200. I do not see a problem with it hitting 10K. And I gave it an eight. And the reason why I gave it an eight is because when you take a look at Ethereum, what's going on, they have some issues. Now, they could actually, you know, shore up those issues with Ethereum 2.0 and everything could work itself out. The problem is, is that it's gonna take a little bit of a time. Now, there is some factors on there, which is the network effect. Everything is being built on Ethereum. That's why I, if I talk about DeFi, I'm just like, you can do DeFi all day long. But if you just wanna make it simple, just get to Ethereum because everything's built on it. Every ERC20 token that's out there. So. Uh, the only reason I gave it a little bit lower is because of this ETH 2.0. If this all goes on off without a hitch, <laughs> great. And uh, I will give it a 10 to 10 in you know a year from now. And that's what we got. Also, the next one will be Chainlink. And Chainlink was one of my holds forever. And uh, I bought it very cheaply. I will just say that. And right now it's at 17 bucks, which is pretty good. Um, it has a market cap, in parentheses, the prediction right there, it says 1 billion. That is the max supply of Chainlink. So with that, I wanted to go very conservative. And all these numbers right here, I just wanna tell you that all these numbers that I have, they're conservative numbers because I make them that way. I don't want to overshoot anything and just sound like ridiculous when people are like, oh yeah, you know what's gonna to go to the moon? Tomato coin and it's gonna be $1,000 tomorrow. It's just stupid. So I have to be a little conservative and uh, just use my best common sense that I have. Now, some of these, some of these predictions, I know no one was gonna believe, with, believe in me and that's okay. Uh, it's, it's just a prediction. It's just where I see things going and I'm not Nostradamus and uh, the, so to me, I just think to myself, this is where I think we could really go. So uh, Chainlink, 
I just doubled up and just say, yeah, about $35. And the reason why I put it as a nine is because Chainlink is one of those oracles. Remember, for blockchain, it's very hard to get information into the blockchain, to pull it out from outside. And uh, Chainlink is one of the few oracles out there that can do that. And even Cardano was talking about implementing Chainlink uh, for the um, uh, stake pool operators as far as when they go and implement Gogan 100%. So I see Chainlink and everybody else uh, has been using Chainlink. Uh, so I think it's gonna be a good one, so nine. Cardano is my next one. So Cardano, it's 32 cents right now, right? And with everything that, that's going on, and I know people have a complaint, even me, myself, and I, <laughs> I was always very skeptical about how um, Cardano and the Cardano Foundation would actually go through and they would make announcements and nothing really get done. They're very slow and very tedious. And I hated that because as me as a business owner, I'm just like, let's just get out, just get things out there. Just do it, just do it, and we'll see what sticks. And then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll short up later. But again, uh, they're trying to do a little bit more than what I'm doing. And uh, I've always said it's kind of like uh, Boeing jets, right? Or that's a bad example. Let's just say any jet, any airplane that's out there, you want uh, the engineers to make sure it flies pretty well. You don't want to just go, just get it up there and let's just see if it flies and it crashes well, we'll fix it and we go on the way down. So it doesn't work. So Cardano, uh, they're very slow and tedious, but I think things are going to pay off, especially this year uh, with the launch of their main nets, with Gogan, voting rights, voting and authority. That's what I was trying to say. Damn it. All so close. So uh, with Cardano, I see it at, it's at uh, 32 cents right now. I see it at least $33. And, and the reason why is because it has a uh, total supply of 45 billion, which is a ton. But I mean, if you're looking at what it's trying to do, it's really not trying to like, I mean, it, it is a disruptor, but it's really going for those Fortune 500 companies. And the head of the uh, uh, Cardano Foundation, uh, he, uh, I forgot the guy's name, but he was just saying that, I mean, he actually came from that world and Charles is all behind him and that's what they're doing. So, and then for like the probability with Cardano, I put it about an eight. Again, I don't know what's gonna happen between Ethereum and with Cardano, but I think uh, one of those is gonna be great and one of those is gonna be just utterly fantastic. I just don't know which one it is. So that's why I put them both at an eight because I don't know which one's gonna win. But again, is, there's probably enough room for both. All right, so taking a look, next is Theta. And Theta is $2 now, and I put it at $10 uh, for this bull run. So you're looking at uh, an AX. So all these things that, that I talk about, if I have 100 bucks right now, right, I think what I would do is if I just wanna go up to, I mean, geez, 3X, 4X, I could put it in Bitcoin. Ethereum is a 10X play. But then as we start to go down, maybe I want to not put, if I have a hundred bucks to spend per month, maybe I don't want to put uh, 80 bucks into Bitcoin, Ethereum, if I want to make, make the big plays. Maybe I have to be a little more riskier. And as I go down this chart, maybe put some more into something else. So uh, Theta, Theta is one of those that, this is a conservative number, $10, but it could be up to $50. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because what Theta does is it allows people to use the unused bandwidth to uh, siphon off that bandwidth so people can have a much better streaming experience. And I wouldn't have put so much money into this if it wasn't for the coronavirus. I'm going to tell you why. Because as we sit down and as we are now doing more remote uh, type of work, as you are watching this video, as the e-gaming uh, platform starts to explode, we're going to need a lot of bandwidth to be able to watch all these things. And Theta is one of those companies that, can, that allows that to happen. Also the fact that, uh, I think his name is Steve Chen. He was the uh, founder or co-founder of YouTube. He is on the advisory board for Theta. They are not there to compete with YouTube because people that try to do that or organizations that try to do that don't really end up so hot. So uh, they are going to be a big player and they've already made massive gains up to $2. So I, I see that they are, not only are they um, a good project, but I think in the future, they are going to be essential for things to actually run and work. So uh, $10 is the most conservative one I could do. Again, it could be up to $50, but that's just what we say. All right, so then the next one we have is Celsius. And Celsius and Cardano, and when I get the Voyager, I'll tell you why. I invest in people. 
And if I have a Charles Hoskinson, if I have an Alex Mashinsky, and if I have a Steve Ehrlich from Voyager, I will invest in those people all day long. Because the company themselves, they can only get you so far, but you have to have a form of leadership, a form of vision, and somebody who's already been there and done that, which is a great predictor of success. Now, not all the time. So if I can take a look at Celsius with Alex Mashinsky, guy that you know created voiceover internet protocol and he's had a couple of uh, successful exits with three uh, billion dollar companies i will invest in that guy all day long and the reason actually there was a question about like why does celsius go up so much part of that big reason is because the ceo gets out there and does an ama all the time he answers all the questions he really pushes the community and he tries to give things back it's a simple process i mean all you got to do is just see what people like what they need, what they want, and give them more of that and don't screw up. If you can do that, it's a, it's a pretty simple thing. So with Celsius and what they're trying to do over there, I can definitely see that and I give them an eight. So it's $6 right now in the bull run, conservatively $20. Now again, I could have put them more, but they have a uh, ah, 695 million circulating supply. So who knows, it could be 20 or 30. So we're looking at uh, just a 3X, maybe a 4X, but it could go much higher. Again, conservative numbers, I could be wrong. And I hope I am wrong. Next one is Stellar. It's at 33 cents, I, I give it up to $2. And the reason is because they've been making a lot of inroads. They've been doing some right things. There's just a, not a partnership with the Ukraine, but some kind of uh, infrastructure that is going on with the Ukraine and stable coins. So when you start to work with governments, that's big news. And I can definitely see where this goes. Now, the problem with Stellar is that they are on the same line with XRP and with the SEC thing going down. I just don't really know. So I gave them a six as far as the probability. Again, could be wrong. That's just what I see it. Uh, Tezos, no, excuse me, Polkadot. Polkadot <laughs> is... I think a much bigger play than what it is right here. So we have it at $10. Remember Polkadot? I invest in people. So with Dr. Gavin Wood, he was part of the Ethereum Mafia, and uh, which Charles Hoskinson and uh, Vitalik Buterin. So if he is there, he's already done it. He's already good at, got a great vision. He already puts out a great product for interoperability between blockchains. Why wouldn't it go to at least $50? And some people say, well, 100. So again, this could be a 10X, a 5 to 10X play, but it's another safe bet, and I put it as an 8. Next one is Tezos. Tezos, I put it at $20, and again, it's a 20X. And the reason why um, is because from 265 to $20, remember the all-time high? Uh, wasn't far off from that uh, back in the day. So with, with that one, I can say, well, maybe it'll get to its all-time high. It only has a circulating supply of 755 million, which isn't too too awful. So, but again, what has it really done lately? I, I don't really hear too much news about it, so I can't give it more than a six. VeChain is three cents. I put it up to 25 cents, which is another great play because everything that's going on, um, they just signed a deal to cover the uh, COVID or coronavirus and uh, either for the uh, medications or the pharmaceuticals, the injections, or how things are going with uh, things with, with Corona. So if you can do things like that, also with pharmaceuticals to go from point A to point B and make sure that everything is in place, uh, the temperature is correct, the pressure is, it, it is correct, and the uh, handling everything that is done, they can do that with uh, VeChain, why not? On top of all the things that they can track, because it is a tracking type of uh, blockchain, uh, with, I mean, even with me, with FBA, I, I think I could definitely uh, see this one going much, much higher, but three cents to a quarter, sure. The problem is it's got 86 billion circulating supply, so that's why I gave him a seven. And really, in probability, it's a, it could be six or seven, but damn, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of circulating supply, but they need that because of so many products. All right, next one, EOS. <laughs> EOS, $3.40, and I said it could go up, go up to 30 and the reason I said that is because its all-time high was around $20. Um, but have you heard anything about EOS? So I'm going to give this one a three. Again, I wouldn't uh, really invest in this one. Uh, that's just how I see it. If they do something, then I'll change my mind. Uniswap, uh, 660, I think can go to $20 because it has a 1 billion circulating supply. I give it a five. I give it a five, and I'm going to tell you why. Because with DeFi, there are so many things out there. How do we know, or sorry, uh, decentralized exchanges? 
How do we know that Uniswap is going to be the one out there? I really can't say that. And if you've been using Uniswap lately with the fees going being so outrageous with Ethereum and the gas fees, it's ridiculous. There's no way that uh, this is another reason, a problem with Ethereum. They need to fix this fast. And that's why I, I diverge uh, into uh, Cardano. So with Uniswap, it could be a big thing, but I'm not for sure. Uh, so I just gave it a five. This is the big play. And this is, I think... If you are getting in and you have a, you're like, you know what, I can put a ton of money in and I want to do it right now, and, and, uh, but I want to be conservative, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, uh, the ones up here, Theta, definitely, right? If you want to make a, a, a play, I think on both sides, I think Voyager is your one. I'm going to tell you why. Again, I invest in people. With Steve Ehrlich, the way that he does things, he's been the CEO of E-Trade, the CEO of Lightspeed, now he's the CEO of Voyager. He's had successful exits. He really cares about the community. I will send people to him on Twitter and he will DM them back. The CEO will DM people back and go, I'll fix that. Let me get that right done right now. I've had him on the show multiple times. They are putting out their token. Well, they have their, their token VGX. They just purchased uh, LGO. Uh, it's the uh, exchange over there in France uh, for institutional investment. They are moving into Canada. And they are consolidating the, the VGX uh, with the other token, the LGO, whatever else. And they put it together. And this is going to be a 7% yield for staking. I believe it's, and it's also going to be to help with fees uh, if you hold more Voyager, kind of like how with what Binance does. And then who knows what else they can get into as far as DeFi. The big thing, though, was that they put out the structure and the community said, that sucks. We don't like that. And Steve said, okay, well, let me, let's go back to the board and we'll fix it. What do you guys want? That is what will make things uh, really pop off. So if you take a look at, the, at Binance and all the different issues they have, although I will say this, pretty cheap fees and pretty easy to use. How much is the Binance token right now? It's about $44. When it came out, it wasn't anything. I didn't really think too much of it. And then it, it skyrocketed all the way in the top 20. I think it's like number 13, 14 right now. So Voyager right now is 29 cents. You know the circulating supply is 222 million. 222 million. Uh, Binance coin is somewhere around there. I want to say it's like 100 and something million. Correct me in the comment section. So if you're looking to get onto something, and remember Voyager is not an exchange. They are brokerage. They are the hotels.com of cryptocurrency. So when you go there, you know how Coinbase is always shutting down? Let me close up. <laughs> you know how Coinbase is always shutting down? Uh, that doesn't, it's not going to happen with Voyager because they use multiple exchanges to find you the best rate. Now, they, they're going to profit on the spread. I don't I have no problem with that. But guess what? If one goes down, they just use the next one. If two go down, they just use the third one. And then they just, they just go from there. So if you, to me, I think that is pretty much the future. If you're talking about centralized exchanges, DEXs may be something in, you know, in, the, in, in the future. I don't know when that's going to happen. But if you're looking at something to really get into, you got a good community. You got a great CEO. You got a token that could really go to the moon. And everything kind of works. Have you ever used Voyager? Everybody that, that I've talked to on my channel, uh, when they have problems, first of all, I direct them over to Steve, or I, I, I send them to Voyager. They usually get it taken care of. There are some growing pains because they're growing so fast. They just put out a quarterly earnings report where a year ago, they were making like, I think it was like 50, it was... I know now it's like 20 million, 200 million or something like that in a quarter. It was a ton difference between uh, a year ago to today. And then also, if you take a look at their stock price, just the stock price, it's gone up exponentially. So if you're looking to make a play, let me just show you what I got. Voyager, 29 cents, the 30 bucks. And I give that a probability of, of a nine. I, told you, I just told you exactly why. So. If it was me, if I have money or not a lot of money, I would definitely do that one. Ave is the next one, and it's 122 bucks right now. Uh, I see it going down to two or up to two thousand dollars, and because the circulating supply is only 16 million, 16 million, uh, the uh, founder Yanni, Yanni, <laughs> Stani, <laughs> he. Uh, He's a pretty smart guy, pretty down to earth, doesn't look to be too boisterous, and it looks like he's got a pretty great uh, vision. But I don't, again, it's DeFi, so I gave it a seven. Really, I should give it a six, but I gave it a seven. Bitcoin Cash, it's 41 now. I see it going to 8,000. It's because it's got, uh, you know, just like Bitcoin, 21 million. And the reason why I gave it an eight, uh, it's because everybody knows Bitcoin Cash, and also it's one of the four 
on PayPal. So you've got uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And uh, I, I just don't see how you can, you can miss with Bitcoin Cash. And then our last one is XRP. And uh, just so you know, XRP, I just I have no idea. It's a big question mark. Like it just went up 45%. And I know the XRP arm is like, you don't know, it's gonna go up to 589 bucks. Sure, I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong uh, with this one. Hopefully it goes up all the way, but uh, I can't even get any, any prediction right now, especially with the SEC. If they win the SEC and everything kind of blows over, then yes, I can definitely see it going not only to $3, I can see it going to $5, $10, sure. But you have to get past that one regulation issue. And I just worry that sometimes when you're a pioneer, you know who the pioneers are? They're the ones with the arrows in their backs because they're always the ones that were first, even the old Wild West days. So um, I'm hoping that Ripple isn't the one that has to lay down on the sword uh, when the SEC you know, skewers them and then it gives regulatory uh, clearance because it's not just them they have to deal with, now they have to deal with other lawsuits. And it doesn't matter if it's frivolous or not, you still gotta spend a bunch of money and that's a big bummer. All right, so. Taking a look at all that, I hope that helps you out in your decision-making process. This is just uh, uh, what I would do. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor, but these are just the things that I see. If I had to do it right now, if I had just a hundred bucks, if, if I just had 20 bucks to spend per week and I really wanted to make it big here, I would definitely go for first, I got to put into Bitcoin Ethereum, just a little bit. The percentage may, may, may differ for you. I would think about Chainlink, Cardano, and the big thing that I was, would really go for is Voyager. I'm very bullish on it. I think uh, people should be. They're, it's kind of like a sleeping giant, and uh, who knows what it'll, what it'll do. But if you're looking for like the easiest play right now, uh, probably Bitcoin, actually probably Ethereum, because it's going up 10X, and then uh, Bitcoin, and then maybe a Chainlink, Cardano, and then down the road to Voyager. All right, so I know it's a little bit long, but there's a lot of information to ingest in there, but uh, that is what I would do. Anyhow, uh, thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.